what, what the mate is talking about. Listen, <clears throat> I've, I've said this relentlessly. Yeah. No matter what went down, it ain't going to change how I feel about Corey as a comic. The right. nigga's incredible. So mm -hmm. whether, whether we never speak again, whatever, whatever, if he holds any animosity towards me, any anger, I, from what I've heard, I don't know for sure, but I've heard, you know, long after the incident, you know, Corey's made jokes and took shots at me. And that's his prerogative. <clears throat> but it don't change how I feel about him as a comic. I still respect him as a comic. His skill level is still bananas. It's just personally, we not that no more. You know, um, is, he still so on your, is he still on your Mount Rushmore? Yes. That don't change that. Right. Nigga still dope. I still look at his old shit and laugh. Mm -hmm. um, it's you know what? Personally, we different. But it's funny that you mentioned we don't need no more enemies, enemies, and you don't want to fuel nothing. I wish the, the 5150 gang could take what you said and really digest that. Because they're the ones that keep the fuel going. You know, every now and then, one of them corny ass niggas hit me up on Instagram and go, yeah, the 5150 raccoon, the 5150 raccoon strikes again. So listen, I get it. Y'all niggas is like the beehive for Corey. Y'all niggas is the Rihanna's. Y'all the, y'all the, you know, y'all the, y'all sugar smack niggas. I get it. Y'all keep that nigga dick in y'all mouth. Y'all, I get it. Y'all, y'all his, y'all his, his choir. But you know, my feelings about Corey got nothing but respect and love for Corey comedically. Personally, that's a different issue. But you fifty one fifty niggas, y'all are gay as hell, man. Yeah, I, I, I look at it like this: like when it comes to like. <clears throat> When it comes to like rap, like like these beefs and stuff, like, and I was about to say rap beef, rap beefs, but you know, even this beef with you know the comedic beef or whatever. And I know that's a lot of those people ain't got no idea how many beefs are out there. But what I look at it, I look at it like this: <clears throat> the blogs, the radio stations, the video channels. Those are in the newspapers. These people, they fuel the fire, and the fans take the bite, the take the bait. The fans, I do believe, and I'm not sing singling out uh, the 51, uh, 50 uh, uh, fan base because they're doing what they're supposed to do. They they supposed to ride for they got. You know, if you had a base. You know, what, not if you have, but your base, they ain't got a particular name, I don't think. But your base is going to ride for you. So I get that. You know, Beehive's supposed to ride for Beyonce. That's what they do. So I'm not singling out anybody, but I do believe that in general, the fans are what got Tupac and Biggie killed. Because if the fans would not have taken the bait when these mag, I was there, I was right in the middle of it. And I also was there when the whole thing got patched up. I was at Farrakhan's house. We sat there and we, I sat there with a, a number of other hip hop luminaries and other people that was involved at the time that was leaders in the community. And we hatched the plan to squash the mini beats simultaneously. And that's how the whole East Coast, West Coast thing got dead. So, uh, what, so I have, uh, some experience on, on this type of stuff, dealing with this stuff. And I've seen the fans fuel the fire and then somebody get hurt. And then the first thing they want to do is say, oh man, you know, you know, you know, we, we, we need to get along. We need to do this, but everybody fueled it. And then the people that, that are, that are the, the, the primary uh, subjects are the ones who suffer the most. So when I, when I speak, you know, like about this particular situation, it hurt me like a motherfucker that you and Corey was beefing because, you know, both of you guys, are my, uh, I'm cool with both of you guys. And so, and, and, and I know that what y'all, what both of you guys bring to the table for, for, for comedy, 
is unmatched. I mean, y'all, both of you guys are necessary and both of you guys are anti-establishment. That's why I guess that's why I like both of y'all. But, you know, I would, you know, men have to do what men have to do. Sometimes men have to speak, you know, directly to each other instead of, you know, talking to everybody else. But I, I just wanted to touch on that, man. You know, listen, 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 I've, I've, heard, I've heard several people tell me, even Godfrey, comedian Godfrey, who, who, who was spoke to Zoe Williams and said, hey man, Zoe really is apologetic about that situation. He would love to squash that. And I said, well, you know, nigga, he got, you know, if he want to reach out to me, he can reach out to me. Now he ain't never reached out to me. That's not to say that he don't want to squash it, yeah. but I'm not going to look for you to, I'm not hunting you down to say sorry to me for some shit you did. You know what I mean? If you really want to find me, find me. Um, again, as far as Corey goes, for the record, that's a cold motherfucker. I, I, I'm still a Corey Holcomb fan. If the nigga put out a special tomorrow, I'm watching it. Are we going to slap hands and eat dinner? No. But if you want to talk to me, I'm open. I'm open. Um, like I said, it's just, it's, it's, his, it's his gang, the 5150 gang. And I, listen, I get it. Some of them niggas ain't got no lives. Some of them niggas ain't fulfilled their dreams. So a lot of that shit is bitter shit. This, like world star hip hop has the angriest niggas I've ever seen on it. Them niggas be angry. So, you know, whatever, man. I'm gonna keep doing what I do. You gonna talk shit to me? I'm gonna eat your ass. I'm gonna eat you. Cause that's what I do. What the ladies talking about?